Welcome to Savory Snacks video number one. The first thing I want to do is take a look at heat exchangers because that's where I initially started the whole Savory video lessons. Type heat exchanger in there. You can see that we've got various different types of heat exchanger that are available. We've got one of the most common, which is the plate type heat exchanger. And then we've got another one, which is also very common. That's this one here. That's the shell and tube type heat exchanger. Those are the two that you're likely to see within engineering, the plate type heat exchanger and the shell and tube type. There are other types of heat exchanger. You can see we've got one that looks slightly different here, shell and spiral heat exchanger. That's quite a niche one. And there's also the spiral heat exchanger over here. Irrespective of what type of heat exchanger you're looking at, they're all going to be designed to, wait for it, exchange heat. Now they need to do this in a efficient and safe manner. There's no point having a heat exchanger that's not very good at transferring heat. Let me see if I can just find the shell and tube type heat exchanger model that's the best one to do a demo with. Click on this one here. The model's taking a little bit longer to load than normal, which probably means my son's watching something on Netflix in the other room. So here we have our shell and tube type heat exchanger. We've got tube side fluid coming in here, and then we've got tube side fluid exiting over here. We've got shell side fluid coming in, and then we've got shell side fluid going out. So two ins and two outs. Just take a cross section for a moment. We'll go briefly into this, but I think what we'll do, we'll have a separate Savory Snacks video to go through it in a bit more detail where we can talk about shell and tube type heat exchangers on their own. Essentially, the only thing you need to understand before we take a look at a different type of heat exchanger is that we've got a fluid coming in and then it's passing through these tubes. It's going to flow into those tubes. The tubes run along here, goes along here. You can see we've got these arrows, the fluid comes out. Then the fluid goes back in the other tubes, comes along here, and then it flows out the top. So that's our tube side fluid. It's called a tube side fluid because the fluid flows through tubes. We've got a shell side fluid, and you can imagine that that is actually where the fluid flows in the shell side. It comes in here, and it's going to surround the tubes. Then it's going to be forced around these baffles, and in this way we can transfer a lot of heat before the fluid is discharged through this connection here and out the bottom. So that's one type of heat exchanger. There are different designs and variations, but they all come under this classification of a shell and tube type heat exchanger. Let's just jump back for a moment. Here's our list again with some heat exchangers. Let's load up this one, the plate heat exchanger, PHE, also sometimes called a PHX. And here's our plate heat exchanger model. Like we had before, we've got two ins and two outs. You can see that we've got a red in, this one here, and then we've got a red out, then we've got a blue in, this one here, and a blue out, this one here. Two different fluids flowing into and out of this heat exchanger. Like we saw with the shell and tube type heat exchanger, we want to maximize the contact surface area between the two fluids. And we do this by flowing them through separate sides of a thin metal sheet. These are actually called plates, and that's why we call it a plate type heat exchanger. This is a thin metal plate where my mouse is, and there's a series of them. You can see though, we've got red fluid here, then we've got blue fluid. I'll zoom in to make it a bit easier. So blue fluid flows between these plates, then red then blue, then red. And in this way, the heat can be conducted through the metal and pass from one fluid to another. So contact surface area and having a large amount of it is critical for heat exchangers in order to ensure that they have a good heat transfer rate. Engineering designers will always maximize the contact surface area in order to maximize the heat transfer rate so that the heat exchanger can be as small as possible and as efficient as possible. We can have a look at this type of heat exchanger also in a separate video. 
Let's pull up another type, the spiral type, which is very niche and one that you're not likely to see very often. So if we go down the list here, we've got a spiral heat exchanger. Here's our spiral heat exchanger. It's called a spiral heat exchanger because inside the heat exchanger we have this spiral shape. See it starts up here and then winds around, gradually moving inwards to the center. And if I spin it around, you can see it's cylindrical in shape. We've got an inlet or an outlet here. Got another one over here, one more here. And finally, one on the opposite side. So in this video, we took a brief look at the two most common type of heat exchangers. These are the shell and tube type and the plate type. And we also had a look at one which is a bit of a niche type heat exchanger. That's the spiral heat exchanger. Remember that with heat exchangers, the idea is to maximize the contact surface area between the different fluids in order that we can maximize the heat transfer rate. The shell and tube heat exchanger is probably the most common because it's the cheapest. However, there are some advantages when you use a plate type heat exchanger. And one of the largest is simply that they are smaller despite still being able to transfer large amounts of heat. So space is a consideration. Let's say for an example, you're working on a boat or a ship, whatever. You may have limited space. And if you need to transfer a large amount of heat, then it might be that you don't have enough space for a shell and tube type heat exchanger. And instead you will need to use a plate heat exchanger. There are definitely pros and cons though to every type of heat exchanger. When you start to increase the pressures and the temperatures, it's less likely that you'll be able to use a plate heat exchanger and more likely that you will have to use a shell and tube heat exchanger. Another advantage with shell and tube heat exchangers is that you can have double walled pipes, which gives you a safety factor. If one of the pipes should leak, it leaks into the outer wall or the void between the inner wall, the inner pipe and the outer pipe, and then we get an alarm. This is quite useful if you have highly corrosive fluids, highly flammable fluids, maybe toxic fluids that are contained within the tubes. I think that's enough for this Savory Snacks video. It serves as a brief introduction to heat exchangers. If you want to access any of the 3D models in the video, then head over to savory.com. You can do it directly through a web browser or in AR or VR. And if you're enjoying this video, then you can also head over to savory.com where we've got over 45 hours of engineering video courses and tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much for your time.